Elliot, great to see you, mate. Put simply, how canny a week or so has it been for Newcastle United? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Um, obviously, good, good result against AC Milan. I think point away from home is you take it. Obviously, we wanted three points, but uh, and then to bounce back against Sheffield and score a lot of goals away from home is something that's very promising from the team. Before that, obviously, it was three straight defeats. Now it's four straight clean sheets and three wins out the last four. What's been the big factor behind the turnaround for you? Would you say? Um, I just think we've been. We've been trying to get them clean sheets back. Um, obviously, I think the break came at a nice time for everyone to reset and come back with a positive mentality. And I think um, the team's been a lot more like solid in out of possession and shape and stuff. So I think it's been paying off. The standout result, like you mentioned, was of course the 8-0 <laughs> win over Sheffield United. I have to ask, what the heck is it like to play in a Premier League game you win 8-0? Oh yeah, it was brilliant. Um, obviously, when the first one went in, obviously everyone was buzzing. It was, I think it was was uh, Sean that one. So got us got us under the way there. And uh, as he score went in, obviously everyone was just buzzing. And then it got sort of six, seven, and everyone was obviously really happy with that. But uh, it was goal after goal, which is, but also it kept a clean sheet, which is obviously a big thing for the team. You're no stranger to high-scoring games. I mean, everyone will remember <laughs> the Bristol Persuasion, yeah. that game. Uh, did it almost feel a little bit like that, in the sense that this could be anything at one stage? Um, I would say it was a bit different, because we, obviously, at Bristol we needed a certain amount of goals, but obviously at Newcastle we were just, obviously, want as many goals as you can get, but we didn't need that many. Um, I just think, obviously, scoring that many goals is such a positive thing going into the rest of the games of the season as we're getting goals so that's good I'm really sorry to ask this because this is going to sound super negative but when there's eight different goal scorers <laughs> and your name isn't on the goal scoring sheet is that a little bit frustrating are you feeling like you know what missed opportunity there uh, I guess so yeah at the time I was obviously wanting a goal but you've just got to stay positive that the team are scoring these goals and ultimately all we want is the team to win obviously on a personal note you want you want to score but I think all the lads in there are so together that we just want the team to win. The hunt obviously is still on for your first Premier League goal for yeah. Newcastle. When is it coming? Do you, do you feel it coming now or not? Yeah, I think so. Um, you don't want to try too hard to get the goal because then sometimes it your, your play doesn't go as well. So I think I'm just going to focus on performing well and I'm pretty sure the chance will come. I remember speaking to Dan a little bit about this because he was kind of saying... I need to be scoring before he scored his first yeah. Newcastle one. Have you spoken to him at all about it, or has it come up in conversation? Um, not much. I know he had to he had to wait quite a while too. Yeah. And when his went in, obviously everyone was buzzing. Um, it's a great goal as well. So I was really happy for him. Just want mine now. <laughs> <laughs> the only negative, I suppose, of of Sunday in particular was that little incident where you were struck by an object from the crowd. Can you just talk us through that. And I mean, we're in 2023, and that sort of thing is still happening on a football pitch. It was incredible. Yeah, um, I think it was after Sven scored, mm. just running over and obviously I looked at the crowd and just seen it coming and I tried to dodge it but hit me in the knee and uh, yeah, there's not much more I can do with that, just leave it to other people. Moving on, the week started off on a positive note, it got even better in midweek with that win over Manchester City in the Carabao Cup. Can that be seen as a statement win from Newcastle United, regardless of the changes, regardless of the competition or not? Yeah, definitely. I think it just shows how much of a good team we've got together. Obviously, everyone sort of playing playing a part. Um, I think it's a it's a great chance to obviously knock out one of the big teams and attack attack the cup. Obviously, that's uh, that performance and that excellent performance coinciding with your own excellent form at the minute. I've lost track of the number of people who are praising you in the media. Certainly, where do you feel like you're at in terms of fulfilling your potential at the minute? Um, I think I'm obviously doing well at the moment. Uh, I still believe I've got much more in my game, but um, I think there's only so much you can sort of grasp at the moment when you, you're first coming through. So I think each, as each game comes, I'm just trying to get better and better and try and keep the shirt. You'll know all about this, being a North Shields boy, being a local boy, but the fans call you the Geordie Maradona. <laughs> yeah. how, how do we feel about that nickname? No, I love it, yeah. Um, I think it first started when I was on loan and then sort of came back to Newcastle and I was thinking will it stick or not <laughs> and it has to be fair and um, 
yeah, it's, it's it's brilliant. But obviously, I'm just trying to sort of do my own thing, I guess. But it's it's good to to have that chant. I suppose that the, the big debate around you is where your best position is. You're such a flexible sort of player. You <laughs> seem to play in pretty much anywhere across midfield, anywhere across the front three as well. Where do you see your best position be? Um, probably where I'm at now. I think left left number eight in the system. Um, yep. I do quite like left wing too, so I'll bounce between the two really. Um, but uh, yeah, I quite, I've always been like a midfielder, so I quite like to be box to box. And it's a it's a midfield that's absolutely packed with talent these days at Newcastle United. Who do you feel like you learn most from in that midfield? Um, I think there's a mix, of quite a few of them. To be fair, they all have different aspects to the game. Um, obviously, I'm sort of watching Joe Linton as he's in my position and trying to sort of learn things from him. So, obviously, in that part of the game is watching Joe, but I also really like uh, the way Bruno plays on the ball. So I try and take notes from him and put it into my game. Are there any extra learning, any extra lessons after training or not with any of them? Uh, yeah, we all do sort of finishing together and obviously yeah. watching them do do the stuff is, is always always good to try and sort of copy. It's not just a squad packed with talent, it's a squad packed with Geordies as well yeah, these so days, isn't it? Uh, I mean, how much do you kind of talk to them? How much have they helped your development, the likes of Sean, the likes of Dan, obviously Mark Gillespie, Paul Dummett, the list goes yeah. on. Oh, loads. Obviously, I think they'll have been in the same position as me coming through. And mm. it's always hard to get in the team because you, you're never really going to come in and just go straight in the team. So I think every day you've got to be on it and training and almost being better than everyone else to try and get in the team. Um, but no, they're, they're really, really good. Um, we're quite close knit together and always sort of talking to each other and giving me just advice for, for what to do. Do you feel any pressure being a Geordie and obviously playing in the famous black and white stripes, or does it make it slightly easier the fact that you're a you're a North Shields boy coming through? Um, I'm not so sure. It's obviously tough, but uh, I think all the Geordies are behind you. Yeah. Obviously, they're all they're all willing you on and wanting you to do well. So you know that they they're all positive and try, trying to sort of help you. And uh, nah, I really enjoy it. Whatever happens, it's been one heck of a rise I mean May 2022 you, you're playing in League 2 <laughs> obviously now you're in the Champions League with Newcastle United do you ever in your downtime kind of look at it and go jeez I'm playing for Newcastle in the Premier League in the Champions League no yeah definitely sometimes I sort of sit there and just think like how far I've came how far the clubs came yeah. um, Jamal was speaking about it the other day just saying how proud he is of where people have took this club to and um it's huge. It's it's massive for the city and the fans. And uh, obviously, when I was growing up, we were just like not what we were like now. And yeah. to see the club sort of improve to where it is 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 magnificent. And to be part of it is even better.